Hello, and congratulations on the purchase of your new Riga greenhouse. In this video, we're going to show you some tips and some common issues to help you assemble a Riga greenhouse. While we are putting together a Riga 3S, the steps you are seeing are almost the same as all of the other Riga models. For larger models, you'll just have to repeat some steps, especially during the eave assembly. Or you'll notice that some of the attachment plates will look a little different, but generally all of the steps will be the same. We hope this video will help you to a successful installation of your new greenhouse and help you to continue on with your dream of growing a fantastic garden in your brand new Riga greenhouse. Thank you once again. Stay with us as we begin to assemble our Riga 3S greenhouse. Now there's a few things you need to know before you start the assembly of your greenhouse. Depending on the size of your greenhouse, you'll get a certain amount of boxes shipped to you. Now depending on the size of your greenhouse, will determine the number of boxes that you actually receive. As an example, your Riga 3S will be one large pallet and a couple of large long boxes for your frame. And of course, the larger the greenhouse, the greater the quantity of boxes. With our boxes received, now let's start the inventory. Start with the box labeled Basic Kit. Please open one box at a time to avoid confusing the parts. Before you begin assembly of a section, check the parts list of that box and make sure all parts are present. Parts lists are provided in every box. These boxes do go through a quality check before they are closed, therefore missing parts are fairly rare. However, should you find a missing part, please call us here at Greenhouse Emporium. Now that you've received, inventoried, and inspected all of your boxes for damage or missing parts, let's get into the real nitty gritty of the project, the tools. The tools that you'll need to assemble this greenhouse. It's always best to have them by, so therefore you're not searching for them when it comes time for assembly. You'll need a Phillips screwdriver, size number two, a 10 millimeter wrench, three millimeter Allen key, which is included in the accessory bag, a level, a step ladder, and then some sort of a file to help remove any burrs that may be located on the profiles. A rubber mallet. Extremely important to have a rubber mallet or possibly one of the dead blow sand filled hammers. Also a tape measure, a combination of metric and inches always works the best. Now, as you start to assemble your greenhouse, one important thing to remember is do not assemble your greenhouse when it's windy or stormy. A half constructed greenhouse can work as a sail heavy wind can pick up your greenhouse and ruin your whole day, not to mention destroy your greenhouse. Now we highly recommend the assembly of this greenhouse as a team of three to four people. If you can pull it off, two to three people will suffice. But however, there are some areas where two people are just not enough in the assembly of this particular greenhouse. Now we would suggest that you start with your gable ends, then move on to your doors, and then move on to your roof vents, or also your roof windows. This helps with two different aspects. It'll familiarize you with the assembly procedures, and it'll also help to build confidence in getting these smaller pieces put together. And with that newfound confidence, you're gonna be more than ready to tackle the main project, which is actually assembling your Riga greenhouse. Now that you've done your complete inventory, and you've set all your parts aside, and you've identified all the pieces that you'll need to complete your assembly, you may notice that there are bolts, lots and lots of bolts in the hardware packages. Much of this greenhouse is assembled with a series of bolts that are inserted into the channels of the aluminum profiles. If you miss inserting a bolt where needed, you will find insertion points in the back ends of the vertical and curved profile extensions. You may also create your own insertion point by simply utilizing a half inch drill bit this will not compromise the integrity of this structure. So if you find yourself in a spot where you've missed a few bolt insertions, and you need them to install, say, your shelving units. Don't worry about it. Now that you've started to build your gables, a quick tip is simply set out all your pieces on two or three folding tables. This way you're able to identify your pieces, have them all right there in front of you, and get started. All right, so step number one. Slide the door frames left and right into the track of the soil profile. Now you can utilize a hammer. Uh, now make sure it's a rubber mallet or one of these dead blow hammers. So when you get done with the left, start with the right. Now one quick tip, 
align the door profile channels with the holes in the soil profile as shown on the video. Don't put any screws in this yet, we'll deal with that later. Identify the small piece of glazing. The dimensions are found in the assembly manual. But you want to identify that piece and then slide it into the soil profile. Once you've got the small piece of glazing, it's time to put in the soil profile corner. Now with a small unit that we have, say as the Riga 3, a self-tapping screw at this point is not necessarily needed. However, if you're working with say a Riga 9 XL models, then you definitely want to install a self-tapping screw right there into that soil profile corner. As you continue to assemble, it can pop out due to the larger polycarbonate sizing of the XLs. Now it's time to secure that all together, inserting the crossbar. Place your crossbar on top of your polycarbonate paneling, and at this time you want to go ahead and insert several of the hex head screws. We'll utilize them later to help with the crossbar connection. With your crossbar in place, your hex head screws installed, it's time to install the crossbar with self-tapping pen head screws. Now one thing to consider here, these frames are aluminum. The holes are pre-drilled, so be extremely careful when you get ready to install these self-tapping screws. Take your time, align it up with the pre-drilled holes. It even helps to have your drill put on the lower torque setting so not to strip these screws. It's now time to insert the curved piece of glazing. One quick tip, only thumb tighten the connecting plate that connects your side profile with your crossbar also known as an S5. The reasoning behind this is when you get ready to install the curved piece of glazing, you might need to wiggle that bar around just a bit to make sure that your glazing fits in properly. So with thumb tightened, you can move it a lot easier. We'll go back and tighten that at a later time. Now this could take a bit of finesse. You wanna maybe have a partner there with you to kinda of maybe cause a little bit of vibration, maybe tap on it just a bit. But here you'll see the importance of keeping that crossbar connection piece just a little bit loose because we'll need to kind of wiggle that glaze around, the glazing around to make sure that it fits into its proper placing. Install the edge curve framing. The square peg in the soil profile corner, also known as a V9, is plugged into the bottom of the edge profile. Now you can utilize that same hammer, be it a deadfall or a rubber mallet, to tap it in. Then utilizing your buddy, Make sure that you get the glazing into the curved frame, nice and snug. So at this point, it's now time to install the triangle shaped glazing at the top. We'll utilize another crossbar, the connecting plate, and a couple of self-tapping screws. With the triangle glazing piece secured, the crossbar mounted flush, We'll go ahead and secure the attachment using the attachment plate. Now we would have pre-installed a few of the hex head screws as you can see here on the video. And then we'll finish it off with a couple of self-tapping screws. Once again, remembering this is an aluminum frame, so take your time. Now we'll repeat this process on the opposite side doing the exact same thing, making sure that our polycarbonate is nice and flush into our frame. And then we'll go back and utilize our connecting plate with our pre-installed hex head bolts and our self-tapping screws. Once again, remember, the frame is aluminum. Take your time. You wanna get it snug, but you don't wanna break off the screw head. Now with that being complete, it's time to move on to our rear gable. Now the rear gable is gonna assemble the exact same way as our front gable. We'll utilize our tabling two to three tables so we can lay out all of our pieces and identify them. We will insert our left and right profile frames into our soil profile and start to insert our smaller pieces of polycarbonate glazing. So we'll repeat a lot of the same steps as we did before, including the crossbar installation. You notice how we check the sizing of our crossbars. Make sure you get them nice and snug. And you want to go ahead and insert four of the hex heads bolts into the rear gable crossbar. These connecting plates are a little bit larger than what we had to deal with in the very front gable. Since we don't have a bottom door, 
we'll be utilizing the opening rear window. So therefore, we'll need a few additional connectors at this point. Once again, leaving those connectors thumb tight because we'll need to adjust them as we insert all of our glazing. With the left and right profile pieces attached to the soil profile, your glazing inserted and you've begun to insert your crossbars, now it's time to install our curved profile pieces. Now there's a small trick to this. Begin by installing your curved profile pieces from the bottom up. You'll want to make sure that your glazing is, is, is securely fastened at the bottom and then slowly work your way towards the top. Now the reason we're not starting from the top to the bottom is because we need to ensure we have room to install the rest of our crossbars. So as we work our way from the bottom to the top, we want to hand tighten our connecting plates to our crossbar. Because once we get ready to start installing our curved glazing pieces, we'll need to be able to wiggle around or move around that crossbar slightly to give ourselves just a little bit more room. Now that we were able to get the curved glazing installed, we're going to start to work on a small triangle piece of glazing as well. Just like we did on our front gable, we want to take our crossbar, our pre-inserted hex head bolts, and our connecting plate so we can secure everything from the top down. Go ahead and insert your connecting plate over your pre-installed screws, align it with the pre-drilled holes, and utilizing your your pan head screws, take your time once again and insert these screws. With the use of our hammer, we'll go back and making sure that our curved profile is sitting flush with our glazing, that our curved glazing flush up towards the top, and then we'll go ahead and resecure everything utilizing our connector plate at the very top. With your pre-drilled holes and your hex head bolts already reinstalled, go ahead and tighten it up and that way your rear gable is nice and secured. As we begin to finish up this video, you may have noticed that several steps were not in order. If you take the time and review your manual, you'll notice that several steps can be done at the same time or slightly out of order. Your curved profile pieces can be laid right next to your glazing as you're putting everything together when you're setting all your pieces out. So you can actually adjust, say, step six and step seven and making them into one step. So this is just a small example of what you can do by reviewing your manual, understanding what you've got to do, and having a plan and working your plan. Now that we've identified all the pieces to our bottom door, go ahead and set aside your square tube and the door profile top piece. We're gonna go ahead and install the T-seal gasket into the door profile top. Now 
Now you want to leave some extra pieces or an extra length on either side. We'll address that and cut that later. Now your square tube and your door profile top will have pre-drilled holes in them as you can see here in the video. There are some self-tapping screws that come with this, with this unit, the hardware is included. We'll simply line up our pre-drilled holes as we're showing you here in the video and we're going to attach the square tubing. Best way to do it is just pre-install one of the screws, line it up and then take your drill and go ahead and fasten it. Now, what we would recommend at this point is simply to lower the pressure on the chuck. Now, once you have all the screws installed, you'll notice how the T-seal is now totally enclosed and encased in between the door profile top and the square tube. Now that you've got that all installed, still leaving that gasket a bit longer, we're gonna go ahead and install the end caps for this particular piece of our square tube and our door profile. The end caps are also known as QR stoppers or a V29. That's also found in the assembly manual. Now once you've got your QR stoppers put into either end of your square tube, your door profile, let's go ahead and continue with installing our corner brackets into our door profiles, left side and the right side. Now with the corner brackets installed into our door profiles, let's go ahead and line up our profile pieces with our top profile piece and our square tubing. You notice here in the video that we left the gasket just a bit long. We'll go ahead and trim that off now, making sure that it's still flush with the channel on our door profile as we show here in the video. Since we've already matched them up, we know the holes are pre-drilled. We'll take some of our hardware that's included and simply start to install the right door profile, left door profile onto the door profile, the top door profile. Now, once we get this all nice and secured, we're gonna take our frame and set it down onto the ground and prepare ourselves to install our polycarbonate. At this point, install your polycarbonate before attaching the door profile bottom piece. Now at this point, you might wanna have a buddy. It helps to kind of vibrate, to tap on the polycarbonate, to really help it slide further into the channel, making sure it's flush at the bottom of the channel. You might even use your manual to help you slide it down to protect your hands. If you have not done so, go ahead and install the finishing. Go ahead and install the remainder of the corner brackets before we get ready to install our bottom door profile. These corner brackets tend to help lock the polycarbonate into place, keep it from sliding out. It's a good indicator whether or not your polycarbonate is all the way into the proper channel. Go ahead and take your door profile bottom, line it up with your polycarbonate. Now, once again, these screw holes are pre-drilled. So take some of the hardware and take your time and slowly finish installing the screws. Once the screws are nice and snug, move on to the other side. Once again, remember to take your time, ensuring that your frame is nice and snug. Now that you have installed the remainder of the screws, your door profile bottom is complete. Let's go ahead and install the remainder of the gaskets into our door frame. These gaskets will be the V25, also known as the T-seal. Taking your time, start from the top, utilizing your thumb, simply press the gasket into the channel, working from the top to the bottom. With the remainder of the gaskets installed, let's move on to installing our door hinges. Now you'll hear us several times in this video reminding you when you tighten your hinges, not to fully install them, to leave them slightly loose. These door hinges will be tightened once we install the doors onto the greenhouse proper. Now, 
Now it's time to install our top door or assemble our top door. So let's go ahead and identify and lay out all of our door profile pieces. This will include our door profile top, the left, the right, and the crossbar that will go along the bottom. Once you've identified and laid out all your pieces, let's get ready to start assembling. Now once again, these holes are all pre-drilled. Use the screws that come with the hardware, keeping the chuck at a lower torque so as not to strip out your aluminum pre-drilled holes. So once you've found the hardware, you've lined up your pieces, take your time. Remember, these holes are aluminum. If you go a little too fast or a little too rough, you potentially could strip out the pre-drilled holes. So go ahead and line it up and screw it all together, ensuring that the frame is nice and snug. We'll continue this on the left profile piece. We'll move it over to the left profile piece from the right profile piece until we have a C-shaped frame. At this point, go ahead and take your frame, slide it onto the ground, and then identify the proper piece of polycarbonate that'll install into this top door piece of our greenhouse door. Insert the polycarbonate into the channels. Now at this point, you wanna go ahead and have that buddy again. Because a little bit of vibration, maybe having a friend slap or tap on the side will help that polycarbonate to slide down into the channel. We've also discovered a little bit of soapy water along the edges helps as well. Now, once you get that polycarbonate slid in, you might even take a rag or maybe even the book of your installation manual to help install that polycarbonate. You wanna make sure that polycarbonate is flush to the bottom of that channel. Having that friend to tap along the bottom, causing a little vibration. Now, as we get ready to install our crossbar for the bottom of the top portion of our door, one thing to remember, the corner brackets will only be installed on one side of the door. The crossbar portion of our door will not receive corner brackets. So once again, on your top portion of your greenhouse door, there'll only be two corner brackets, and this will not be the side that, it's, that receives the crossbar. Okay, so now we've identified our crossbar. We want to make sure that we can fit it onto our polycarbonate and line it up, ensuring that our polycarbonate is flush in our channels. Our crossbar is flush with our side profiles and we'll fasten it all together with some screws. Okay, now that our door frame has been installed, polycarbonate has been installed, let's move on to our sash lock. Now, once again, the sash locks have pre-drilled aluminum holes. The hardware is included. So just match up the holes and drill it into place utilizing your screw gun. Once your sash lock is installed, let's go ahead and put the remainder of our T-seal gasket into place. Now, as we had mentioned earlier in our video while we were assembling our bottom door, leave yourself a little extra slack on your T-gasket installation. The manual will recommend that as you install the T-gasket, just to simply loop it from your side profiles up to your top profile. Now this will work just fine. However, we find that it's just not really a clean look. So what we've decided is as you install your gasket along the channel on your door profile, when you get to the edges, leave yourself a little bit of extra room, a little extra slack there. Because once again, we're gonna cut these down at a 45 degree angle. So once your gasket is installed fully to the corners, take your scissors, cut that gasket down to a 45 degree angle. That way, it looks nice, clean, 
and it gives you a good proper seal when you close your door. So here you can see as we put our gasket along the top of our crossbar, once we get to the corner, we leave ourselves a little slack cutting that gasket at a 45, trimming our side profile piece to a 45, joining the two pieces, and then simply slide it into place. Once again, creating a nice, clean look. Once your gasket has been installed, let's go ahead and move on to our hinges. Earlier we had mentioned that our hinges should be installed, but leave them just a little bit loose. You don't want to have them completely finished grade installed. We'll go back later once we install these doors onto the greenhouse proper and tighten them all together. So the reasoning for leaving them just a little bit loose is it just makes it a bit easier to align them and get them properly installed into the greenhouse itself. As we continue on assembling all of our accessories, we've now moved on to the roof window. Now, unfortunately, we don't show an incredible amount of detail assembling this roof window. What we're primarily focused on is gonna be the corner brackets. As you can see in this portion of the video, we're dry fitting our corner brackets. We're also dry fitting the metal stabilizers, also known as grub screws, V13. With all of our pieces laid out and identified, we're now gonna get ready to silicone all of our corner brackets. You wanna make sure that you get good full coverage on all sides of these corner brackets. Remember, this is your roof window. So if you do get moisture, condensations, or possibility of leaks, this is where it will occur. Once again, you wanna make sure that all of your corner brackets on your roof window are completely coated with silicone. Now this is also addressed in the assembly manual for your roof window. Attention, when using a foundation frame, attach it to the soil profile before starting these steps. Step eight, attach the soil profile to the end gable, pre-installed corner connectors, also known as V9s. Now that you've got your gable end attached to your soil profile, it's time to secure it. So go ahead and screw the corner brackets, also known as V12s, to the gable end, soil profile, and the side soil profile. This will help to lock both pieces into place, which is extremely important as we get ready to move to our next step. At this point of the assembly, we highly recommend that you have a buddy there to help hold the other end of this ridge profile. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna skip step 10 and move from nine to 11. Not to worry, we'll come back to step 10. So now with the assistance of your friend, take that ridge profile and set it into the groove that is located in the gable profile. Now, just a quick tip, you might wanna rest that roof ridge on a standing ladder or possibly build something that'll help to keep it horizontally in place. This way you can skip step 10 and proceed with step 11 first. Go ahead and take the end plate, also known as a V11, and attach the end plate with the pan head screws provided in your hardware and locking the ridge profile and the gable profile into place. Let's go ahead and move on to our curvature pieces. Here's a major tip. Check to make sure that it's the right curvature by holding it up against the gable end. This will save you a lot of time down the line, ensuring that the side profile is installed in the correct direction. Now, once you've identified the correct curvature, let's go ahead and install. So take that piece that you've identified and you want to start to install it in the soil profile and in the ridge profile. Now utilizing that same dead blow hammer or rubber mallet that we had used earlier, you want to start at the bottom and then work your way to the top. So place your curved profile into your ridge line and into your soil profile. Now you wanna alternate going from the top to the bottom. You wanna to do this at the same time. Now once again, 
It really helps to have a friend there to hold things into place for you. And also a short tip, if you have some earplugs, now would be a good time to utilize them. Because as you go from top to bottom with this hammer, this is aluminum, it can get noisy. So simply take your time, go from the top to the bottom, back to the top, back to the bottom. Our ultimate goal is to slide that curved piece down to our gable end, flush with our piece of polycarbonate that we'll install later. That will become our step 10. One thing we have found that helps is if you have a little soapy water, you might put a little soapy water on the top and bottom pieces of your curved profile. Helps the slide just a little bit better. As you can see here in the video, you want to alternate between your left and your right piece of your curved profiles. Once again, by doing this step and skipping step 10, which we will come back to momentarily, it helps support that ridge profile, freeing up a bit of space. One quick hint before we close off this section of our installation. Install all the side curved profiles, leaving space for glazing sheets to be installed. When you're installing a small one like the Riga 3 that we did today, this is not as important. But if you start getting into, say, a Riga XL8 or a Riga XL9, those are much larger, much taller units. It's not a bad idea to install all your curved profiles. Now that we've got our curved profiles in the place, let's move on to step 10. When you get ready to insert the glazing into the ridge profile, now's when you really want to have that friend available. Go ahead and grab your glazing and start off by inserting one end into the ridge beam profile. And slowly, taking your time, with the assistance of your buddy, start working to get that glazing slid fully into the channels. There of the ridge profile, and then eventually into the curved profile. This is definitely the part of the installation where you want to make sure to have some good patience and good communication. As we continue our work on our way through our glazing, we want to ensure that we are fully seated in the channels of the soil profile, the gable profile. With our polycarbonate fully seated, now it's time to go ahead and tap in the curved profile. Once again, good communication and patience will really help with this. Take your time, ensuring that it is on all sides. With one piece of glazing installed, let's move on to the next one. So this will be installed the exact same manner that we did on our first piece of glazing. You want to start by inserting the top piece into your ridge profile and then slowly working your way from the top to the bottom, making sure that that glazing fits entirely into the channel. Now you may notice directly behind us, the stabilizer angle. That's shown on step 16, but we've already got it installed. One quick tip. The stabilizer angle will really help to lock all your pieces into place as you're assembling. So don't wait until step 16 to put in your stabilizer angle. By putting in the stabilizer angle, it will not only lock in your curved pieces to your gable pieces, but it'll keep them from moving around as you install the rest. As you can see from our video, our greenhouse tends to slide until we can get it fully installed. So just like when we assembled our gable pieces, when you have that buddy helping you, a little bit of vibration, sometimes a little tapping on the polycarbonate will really help them to pop right into that channel. Remember, you don't need to be aggressive, just a little bit of vibration.
You noticed earlier in our video when I mentioned to install that stabilizing angle. Because once we've got our gable pieces put in, our polycarbonate installed, our angle pieces lined up, we want to make sure it doesn't go anywhere. Also, your stabilizing pieces will be part of your top and bottom shelf, and that'll be addressed later in the installation manual. Setting the crossbar for roof window. When you get ready to install your roof window, one thing to remember is that your roof window can be placed anywhere in your greenhouse structure that you would like, left side or right side. Depending on the model, of your greenhouse that will determine the number of roof windows that you have. To install the roof window, go ahead and start off with your polycarbonate, but you want to put it into the soil profile first, then take your crossbar and then use it almost like a tool and kind of bend that polycarbonate into place, ensuring that it slides into the curved profile channel and then eventually locking it into place with a cross connector plate. Now that we've assembled our greenhouse, let's get ready to install the rear window. We had mentioned earlier in this video to keep your hinges just slightly loose so that we can make sure to get our door nice and level before we actually tighten them down. As you can see here in the video, we install our rear window. Put in your retaining pins. Go ahead and close your window. Once you close your rear window, you'll be able to adjust those screws in those hinges to make sure they give a better fit. As we move on to our rear window opener, consider whether or not you live in a high wind area. If you do, move your window opener a little closer to the center. That'll help to stabilize. Now you will lose a little bit of the opening space, but it will stabilize it for high wind situations. Back at the initial assembly of our rear window, we installed the opener in the pre-drilled holes. Now we're installing the lower bracket in which we will use to lock our window into place. One quick tip or trick if you will, open your window, hand tighten the bolts on the lower locking mechanism. With that being done, you'll be able to slide that lower locking mechanism So you want to hand tighten the bolts on the lower mechanism. So therefore you were able to slide it into the position where your window will sit nice and flush. Once that happens, go ahead and secure that lower mechanism into place. As you can see here on our video, when we close our window, it's nice and tight. When we open it, it opens up smoothly and gives us plenty of breeze. With our doors pre-assembled, it's time to hang them on our greenhouse. So take your bottom door with the pre-installed hinges and align them with the hinges already installed on your gable end. At this point, it's worth mentioning that you should go back into your manual and review step two. We had mentioned earlier as we assembled the gable to not attach the pan head screws on your door profile left and right and your soil profile until after you had installed and mounted and were aligning the door. Now is when that becomes important. As we have attempted to close our door, we noticed that it will not close. It's not fitting properly. We have reviewed step two. We've taken our dead blow hammer and we've gently tapped on the right door profile and the left door profile to give it just a little bit of extra room. Remember, we didn't install the screws down there, so this should be a very easy procedure. Go ahead and try to close your door. With our bottom door aligned, it's now time to move on to our top door. We're going to repeat the same process as we did on our lower door. 
take that pre-assembled top door and align our hinges that we've pre-installed onto our gable end. Once again, earlier in the video, we had mentioned about not to tighten your hinges all the way. This is exactly why. You'll notice how we're having a little bit of difficulty getting our hinges to align and to install. This is a very simple fix. Take your drill gun, loosen that hinge just ever so slightly. Repeat that process on the top hinge as well. We'll go back and tighten these up once our top door has been fully installed. got our hinges to align, simply put the secure pin in. Before we finish tightening everything down, let's go ahead and try to shut the top door. If your top door doesn't shut, take that same dead blow hammer or rubber mallet and just tap on the gable right above the door. With our doors installed and aligned, now's the time to go back and screw in the pan head screws as mentioned in step two. Next we're moving on to the door gasket. This gasket will fit into the door threshold. It's also known as a V14. It's an extremely easy piece to install. As you can see here, we simply slid it into the groove and pressed it down. This will just ensure that no dirt get into the soil profile. If you don't like where you've originally placed it, you can simply pull it back up, realign it, and press it right back into place. So now our doors are hung, our gaskets in place, our hinges are tightened and secured. Now it's time to install the door handle and the accessories. Instructions on installing the door handle can be found in your manual in the same location as the assembly of the top door. Now while installing your door handle, remember to remove the retaining ring before you slide it through the pre-drilled hole on your top door profile. Once you've slid your handle through, go ahead and reinstall the retaining ring which will hold your door handle into place. And then now we're ready to install the interior handle. The interior handle will simply pop into place as we're showing here on the video. You'll install your screw through the pre-drilled hole. You'll install the bolt and go ahead and lock it into place using your nut driver. Now it's time to move on and install the door catch with the screw cap as well. Now to install this door catch, we'll need to pre-drill a hole before we screw the door catch into place. Since you'll be putting pressure on the side of the greenhouse as you drill this hole, always have that buddy close by to hold the body of the greenhouse in place so it doesn't move. With our hole pre-drilled, go ahead and grab some of that hardware, those screws that are provided, and install the door catch into place. And then finish it up with the screw cap. Now with our door hung, our door latch attached, our door catch where it needs to be, Let's do a trial run on our door to see how smoothly it opens and how smoothly it closes. Now that we've moved into the interior of the greenhouse, we're going to start to seal the interior. Identify your V23, also known as a wedge seal. You'll notice a perforation down the center. Simply grab both sides and split it right down the middle. With your separated pieces, you'll want to identify the side that has the openings. Your seal with the openings, or the three bars, as we're showing here in the video, will be the side that is placed facing the polycarbonate. So your wedge seal will be placed inside the polycarbonate, utilizing a tool, possibly your nut driver that you had used earlier in the day. The biggest trick to installing this wedge seal, you want to leave yourself extra room, because as the weather changes, the seal will expand and contract. So always leave yourself just a little bit of extra gasket for those colder days. Mm -hmm. 
Now you'll continue this process on all four sides of your greenhouse. So once again, your wedge seal or your V23 is strictly for the interior of the greenhouse to seal it off between the soil profile and your polycarbonate. So we've done a quick review to ensure that the bottom of our greenhouse has the wedge seal installed in all four corners. With that being completed, let's go ahead and review a few other items that have been put into our greenhouse. Let's start off with our sash lock. Let's ensure that it closes properly and that our window seals properly. Our window opener. Our corner brackets are all installed and tighten down. We're looking at our connector L brackets. Depending on how you're gonna secure this unit, be it a concrete slab, a footer, or some sort of a wooden foundation, your L brackets would be your primary method of securing your greenhouse to your foundation. As we move further on, we look at our stabilizing brackets, ensuring that they have been completely secured. Our upper stabilizing brackets, our lower stabilizing brackets. Now your lower stabilizing brackets, which we see here in the video, the stabilizing brackets not only help to secure and hold your greenhouse all together nice and snug, but they can also be utilized as your support bracket for the interior shelves. Well, that concludes our installation for today of the Riga 3S. We'd like to thank you for joining us today and hopefully you found a couple of helpful tips and tricks as you begin to assemble your greenhouse. We here at Greenhouse Emporium would like to say thank you for trusting us with your business. And as you move forward on your greenhouse and growing your garden, if you have any questions, please don't hesitate to give us a call.